Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 384. We're continuing with our lesson theme, Reality Transit, part 3. <coughs> we're talking about four interventions of the Lord that will constitute the end of the current age. Each intervention will be a judgment and a deliverance. We're currently focusing on the third intervention. We talked about the deliverance aspect of it called the glorification and the rapture and what that entails, an imminent change from human to divine from finite to infinite, from Adamic to the fullness of divine sonship. We're also looking at the judgment aspect of this. We stated that this time, <coughs> the deliverance, the rapture, would be only limited to the church communities, the global church communities and those that indwell them. Nobody beyond the church communities will experience the rapture because all beyond the church communities will be under the Luciferian influence, not the influence of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> those within the church communities will also <coughs> experience a judgment. We want to uh, take a look at what the Bible says <coughs> about the, um, the effects, the significance of the judgment. Scripture indicates the third intervention of the Lord will include a judgment upon the church communities. Revelation 3, verses 2 to 3. Each church community is given a warning, an evaluation, and instructed as to if they're not measuring up what to expect if they don't change the type of judgment that's going to come upon them this is the purpose of the letter to the churches Revelation 3, <clears throat> verse 2 to 3. This is referring to the church of Sardis. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For if not, find, not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So he's telling them that the judgment is going to come upon them suddenly if they do not alter <coughs> their <coughs> lifestyle, if they do not return to the priorities of sanctified living Revelation 3 verses 15 to 17 <clears throat> I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would thou wert cold or hot then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, he's saying, you disgust me. Because, <clears throat> thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. <clears throat> Scripture indicates that he is giving 
this church, the Laodiceans, a thorough evaluation of what's restricting them, what's holding them back, and what it detests him to have to um, even be aware of their condition. It also goes on to talk about what they need to do to get out from underneath their <clears throat> ultimate judgment. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. <clears throat> as many as I love I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. What is he saying here? He's saying <clears throat> just because you have a physical material substance you think that you are being <clears throat> benefited. And he says, if you can see your spiritual condition, and he goes on to name exactly what they look like to him spiritually. He says, you're miserable, poor, blind, <clears throat> and naked. What does that mean? Naked. It means <clears throat> that everybody that's in Christ has a vesture, a garment, called the robe of righteousness. And it is in this robe of righteousness that we stand before God. We present ourselves before God dressed in an attire of righteousness. What these have done is destroyed their garment, the robe of righteousness. And he says, <clears throat> the only way you can ever, ever stand before God is to do away with the thing that's causing, that's destroyed your, your garment and get it back by experiencing experiences of sacrifice. Gold tried in the fire. He says you must endure suffering to be able to reestablish your relationship with me. What is this last word you've got in the second principle? <coughs> What's Where? the last word of that principle? Where? Second principle. I mean, where is it on the page? Halfway down the page. Um, and the, the last word of the second principle that we've written, before it says Revelation 3.18. Before it says Revelation 3.18? Yeah. The line before it. Okay. Uh, the room. Well, the scripture indicates some saints will miss the rapture because they have pursued deceitfulness of riches and have destroyed their robe of righteousness. The Lord will allow them to go through suffering in the tribulation era to gain back their true spiritual understanding. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Only through suffering will they be able to be reestablished. They, Jesus is saying, you're going to miss the rapture. Mm. And you're going to be faced with one of two decisions. Eternal damnation or intense suffering. Now we see an example of this group in the next principle. Scripture indicates after the rapture, they miss the rapture, their community will be overrun by the Luciferians. Prior to that, they're protected. All the church communities are protected in a world dominated by the fourth empire. Why? How would they protect? By the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Satan tried to get at them. He couldn't because of the power that surrounded him. Where the dragon stands over the woman to devour the child. As soon as it's born, the child is born. Satan can't devour it because the power is so great <clears> that the power takes the child up. To heaven, it's the rapture. Mm. So we're understanding that the majority of each community, except for the Ephesians and so on, do not make it. The majority. Yes. Mm. Overwhelming what majority. Kind of, what kind of percentages are we talking about? What kind of percentages? Yeah, 75, 80. Wow. 
It's only two churches that are commended out of the seven. Ephesians and Philadelphia. Not Ephesians. Um, what is it? Um, one is Philadelphia. Philadelphia and the first one. Sardis. No, not Sardis. Um, uh, what is it? Pergamos? Pergamos, okay. One of those. I guess they have to be in that, that location. They're yeah. suffering, yes. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> So the rest of them, they're going to be <coughs> individuals that make the rapture, but the communities as a whole will not. What does that say about the very elect? I'm calling them the very elect because they're in the communities. Mm -hmm. The 80% do not make it. Well, basically what it means is the last, the last minute, the Lord is going to allow temptation to come into the communities, right. testing them, and majority of them aren't going to be able to... Just like every time the human race is tested, they sure, fall fails. to later. Yeah. Yeah. But let's go on. <clears throat> We're going to see what happens. The, the, <clears throat> the um, destiny of the Laodiceans. <clears throat> Scripture in case after the rapture, their community will be overrun by the Luciferians. They will be killed for their restored faith, but will not have time to perform those services which would have restored their robes of righteousness. So they will appear under God's altar. Revelation 6, verse 9 to 11. <coughs> When he had opened <clears throat> the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? <clears throat> and white robes <clears throat> were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. <clears throat> so the inference is that they got killed very shortly after the rapture took place. The community gets overrun. They get rounded up. And there's a brief time <clears throat> in which they give a testimony. They realize with the warning that the Lord gave them, I advise of you to buy me gold tried in the fire. You're going to have to do some suffering, otherwise you're not going to be able to stand before me. You're going down to torment regions. Mm -hmm. They realize where what's going on. They realize they've been deceived by their wealth. <clears throat> they've been put into a situation where they have one choice, and that one choice is to endure whatever it is that they have to endure. So they stand before, <clears throat> they're delivered up, they're brought before these rulers, the kings, the uh, fourth empire, <clears throat> individuals. Notice what it says here. Yeah. Let me just want to yeah. bring out mm -hmm. this point. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything we've just understood in, uh, implies that these who missed the rapture of the martyred groups do not comprehend that one second after the end of the age of grace, the only way that you can get to heaven is through death. Because if they did comprehend it, they would have arranged their affairs prior to it. Oh, certainly. They can't comprehend it because they're in the darkness. If they weren't in darkness, they wouldn't have been prepared for the rapture. But we're including the 80% that you've just mentioned. 80% Who is in are in darkness. the communities. They're in darkness they've in the communities. They've been deceived. Sure. They weren't ready when the rapture took place. The Lord's warned them, hey, mm -hmm. you got to do this to be ready when I come. If they don't do what he tells them to do, right. they stay in the deceived position that they're in. The Laodiceans didn't give up their wealth. They went down to the wire the day of the rapture, and that's when the realization hit them, oh, wow, you know, I've been left behind. <coughs> so the Lord tells them through the letter. The angels tell them this is what the Lord says, but pay attention to it, but they don't pay attention Not to it. All. And they're the elect. Yes. I feel sorry for the Lord. I really yes, do. yes, yes. 
Yes. The human race cannot be underestimated. You're right. I've been underestimated. Well, it says even the very elect might be deceived if yep. it were possible. That's it. Mm -hmm. If it's, it were possible. It's possible. It's, it's, but it is possible. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> no, it's not possible. <clears throat> to be deceived means you're no longer in the category of the elect and the select. Okay. Be deceived means you've fallen. He keeps telling them, you've fallen, you've fallen, you've fallen. Go back to where you once were. Right. You're no longer my elect. Matter of fact, he tells them, I know you're not. We don't have a relationship. So the, the, the elect can only be the 20%. Which are totally committed, totally walking in the spirit, totally above deception. They can see it for what it is because they've been promised the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. There's nothing that you will be deceived by if you depend upon him. So the <coughs> virgins. We're going to go into them. Okay. I want to hear we're what you're going to say. Them. All right, all right, all right. All right. Don't think we're not thinking. No, I, thinking. I, know, I, know that's, I know that's where you were going to go. We're, we're, we're going to we're come gonna up with that. that. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so what you find here, <clears throat> these realize the good... At the very la last, they're down to the wire, and uh, they realize they got no works, no, um, they have no experiences. All they have is their testimony. Note, note what it says here. <clears throat> when he had opened the fifth seal, verse 9, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony, which they help. That's the thing that saves them. They have no experiences uh, that enable them to repair their boat. All they have is the testimony that they are in Christ and that they refuse <clears throat> to give up their stand for Christ. But that's saving faith that enables them to be butchered and then their souls come up under the altar. So that puts this group in exactly the same position as those in Revelation 12, verse 11. <clears throat> Who yeah. Uh, yeah. love their yeah. lives not until uh, the end. Right. Testimony. They're in exactly the same. It yeah. doesn't matter what they knew before, how much <laughs> they had or hadn't done, they're in exactly the same position at this right. point. That's right. Mm. That's what makes them overcomers. Mm. So, um, they're given robes and they're told rest for a season until your fellow servants. Who are the fellow servants? The rest of the church communities. Remember we said 75, 80 percent missed the rapture. So the rest of these saints are going to have time to be restored by the things that they're going to suffer. <clears throat> you find that in Revelation um, 7. Scripture indicates all the church communities will then be overrun after the rapture. And all those saints left behind will flee seeking places to escape. At the time of the great tribulation, they will be hunted down and martyred. But by that time, they will be restored by erasing the spots in their robes. Mm -hmm. Revelation 7 verses 9 to 14. <clears throat> After this, I beheld in low a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. Now, is there something familiar about this? <clears throat> Turn to Revelation, 5th chapter. <laughs> We're going to come back. I want to point out something. Verse 9. Now 
And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to, thy, to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. These are the ones that make the rapture. Revelation 7. The ones who don't. <laughs> the ones that don't. Yeah, that's the age of the sin. Yes. Yes. Verse 9. Look at, look at what it says. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number. 75 to 80% of the communities are going to miss the rapture. Well, kindreds, nations, tongues, and peoples they left behind. The ones that make it are Revelation 5, 9. <clears throat> nine. And they're not a great multitude. But everything revolves around the church communities. Let's continue. That's great insight. After this, I beheld in law a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanks <clears throat> giving thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our god forever and ever amen one of the elders answered <clears throat> saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb remember what we said in last lesson he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle their robes are spotless therefore they're counted worthy to go in the rapture these robes were spotted others didn't even have robes they all got left behind but of those 80 percent <coughs> Some of them come out of tribulation and not great tribulation. There are, there are martyred groups who appear before great tribulation appears. Uh, no. 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 Revelation 7 is the first ones where you see martyrs coming up. Prior to that, you see the ones under the altar. Then you get uh, like Revelation 12, Revelation 15, where the other martyrs are coming up those on the river of uh, glass others <coughs> out of the mark of the beast but everybody else comes after this group that's the remnant so then that satisfies the revelation six yes revelation six nine something in that area mm -hmm. who said to the father are you going to uh, take revenge for us and he says, wait here until the rest of the, the, rest of the, the martyr groups mm -hmm. come together. That's the, point, the point being, mm -hmm. the martyr groups all come together in one, in one section, if it's from great tribulation. Yeah, that's Revelation 7, it's from great tribulation. Right, I was pre I'm pointing out that I was previously thinking that groups came up one after another, but evidently that's not correct. Well, after, after this great multitude comes right. up you do get groups coming up After at different that. periods okay. because you're going to have <clears throing> things happening on the earth <clears throat> after the great tribulation you're going to have <clears throat> those that come up on the sea of glass they have overcome these are the ones that have to deal with 666 right. not taking the mark okay. you're going to have others that come up also <clears throat> from different experiences so you're going to have different groups and as you come up you remain in that group eternally that's your family mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> because you go into eternity commensurate with what you have experienced together yes so brother Jones. Mm -hmm. 
in each one of these groups that their lifestyles put them in the group that they're in. Okay, so now, there are some that are going to miss the rapture that are fully knowledgeable of everything and can teach people things. Mm -hmm. So when they miss the rapture, they're in a selected group. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is they, they get into these groups and they are the greatest in the group because of the knowledge that they have and they can point out what the, the contemporaries, everybody else that, that missed the rapture, why they missed the rapture and what they have to do to fix it. In other words, but they're on a, a very high level and they, they just barely miss the rapture. But I suspect it's going to be like that in every one of the groups. Yes, but those that are high and miss the rapture, <clears throat> well, we're just getting into that after we get through with that. You're touching on what he's touching on. We'll bring it together. What we want to focus on, <clears throat> just ending up here, are the great multitude groups that <clears throat> because of <clears throat> their own doing, allowing themselves to be deceived into missing the rapture and then have to deal with the circumstances that take place after that. <clears throat> Now, we're going to touch on what Mr. Smith is saying and what Chris is saying. Because what you're talking about, what you're talking about, are the foolish virgins. Scripture indicates there will be apostles and prophets who will also miss the rapture because they were not open to the move of the Holy Spirit in them when it was time for their change. They missed the rapture not because they were deceived into sinning or they were deceived into diverting from something. They missed the rapture because they were not attentive to the time of their change. <clears throat> okay, so let me bring something up really quick. It's interesting from, from, from a certain perspective in other words, ignoring what we already know. Um, Paul makes it on the first group out. He qualifies, he makes a rapture, he's a dead in Christ. Mm -hmm. he, he paid with his life. He died a martyr's death. Mm -hmm. But it's not because he doesn't miss the rapture, he's, he's the first to go. Yeah, well, the, when he died, it wasn't his time, of course. He realized that when he wrote First Corinthians, when he wrote First Thessalonians, he thought the rapture was going to take place in his lifetime. After he had subsequent experiences, and he writes about them, he understood the rapture wasn't going to take place in his lifetime. <clears throat> and he goes on to talk about that. But what we want to look at is this, turn to Matthew 25, verse 10. And while they, the foolish virgins, went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. This is uh, symbolic of timing. They're gone. He comes. They miss. Well, what does it mean? It means basically <clears throat> that when the change took place, turn to Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 11. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. How long does this take? A twinkling of an eye. If you are not ready, when the XY axis crosses, you will not experience the change. Foolish virgins don't experience the change because they were unwilling to put themselves in a position to be ready when the XY axis is crossed. That's because they thought they were ready. Yeah, they thought they had an understanding of when it was be. Oh, I can, I can, I can estimate when the change is going to take place in me because this is happening, that's happening. No, we can't do that. You can't anticipate. You have to wait because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to indicate in you when it's time. Don't you know somebody like that? Yes, <laughs> yes. Anyway, they left behind. What happens? <clears throat> Scripture indicates they will be the leaders of the left behind saints. They will be the encouragers. They will be the ones that will direct those that ultimately will go to their martyrdom. They're going to give them understanding of events to come because they have the spirit within them. They will make them ready when these things happen so that these martyrs die with understanding of what's taking place. Scripture indicates they will lead the saints in the tribulation era. Turn to Revelation 18, verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets that are in the heaven. For God hath avenged you on her. So to answer your question, this is going to be one group. They die, they all become one family in one location. The ones they are instructing go to different locations, commensurate with the level of spirituality, okay. maturity they were when they passed. You're going to have those on the sea of glass. You're going to have the great multitude. All these were under the ages of, of these prophets and apostles. So the difference between <coughs> the group in Revelation 6, 9, and 10, who have to wait under the altar because they don't know anything, haven't got any robes, haven't got any position, so on and so forth, is, I should say, compared to all of the other groups thereafter, is the work of these apostles and, and apostles and prophets. Their work enables every other group to have some level of comprehension and therefore some level of position yes. once they break into Yes. They are spared. They're given time so that they can receive what they need to progress to the point where their robes are washed and they have rewards when they finally come before the world. 